shout out to our sponsors at IconBet. Open source, decentralized gaming, no deposits, play straight from your wallet. IconBet, made by the players, for the players. Ion Icon is proudly supported by Icon Nation and the Icon community. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Eye on Icon, the episode where we go around our ecosystem and talk to our builders. But this time it's a special episode. We're talking to one of our partners, just been announced, Red Fox Labs. And we have with us the CEO, Ben. Ben, how are you today? Thank you very so much well, for coming on the show. Yeah, Good. very well. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. Really, uh, really excited to be here. Excellent. You know, um, when this news dropped, it's been all the rage. Every iconist is talking about it. And it's just so ideal. Metaverse and all of a sudden Icon announced a partnership with Red Fox Lab and it's all about the metaverse. So um, oh, could you tell us a bit about how that came to fruition? Who was in the background, you know, wheeling and dealing to make this happen? Yeah, I think um, obviously we're working with um, Void Cyber and Dave, who's probably well known in the community. And um they're doing a fantastic job of sort of identifying uh, partners that would be compatible with what we're doing. And, you know, Icon sort of popped up as far as we, we've, we've known them since 2017 days and, and since the beginning as far as keeping an eye on them. But ultimately, they have a very similar philosophy in this cross-chain, multi-chain architecture and building. And we're very much the opposite to maximalists as well. We, uh, we understand that we need to build great products that are easy to use and um, adopt, adopt the wider audience. So that's a very good starting point because there's very few projects like that. So I think we're very compatible in the in the way we think. And then Dave made the introductions and made it um, made it very seamless because he knows both projects very very well. Mm. Mm, well, good good work, Dave. Huge shout out there. Congrats. Um, cool. Okay, so now. From I'm gonna we're gonna do this interview from an iconist who doesn't know much about Red Fox Labs mm-hmm. and everything you're working on. So could you give us a bit of a history about Red Fox Labs, how it came to fruition, what the goal is? Yeah, the backstory. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think some people will find it very interesting, but um, ultimately we sort of came into the blockchain space a long time ago, got into it due to being overseas foreign workers and trying to send money back to our countries and thinking there's got to be a better way than standing in a Western Union line. Uh, and we've done Fortune 500 turnarounds and a lot of consultancy for big companies. And we saw that this was very similar industry to, uh, we likened blockchain to Linux and sort of turned around and said, Linux needed Red Hat to build easy to use applications and companies on top of the infrastructure for it to take off. And then we thought Red Fox is a good name because foxes in Asia are synonymous with um, cunning decision makers and wise. And it's a very, um, fox is very uh, symbiotic of um, investments. So we thought this is a really good name for it. Um, And then we turned around and said, now we need a model. So we developed a nine point funnel system and we turned around and said, how do we choose businesses that we want to build because we're going to argue, we're going to want to build cool stuff. And ultimately, the problem is going to be that we're going to turn around and say, um, we're going to argue over what to build. We're going to we're going to get it wrong. There has to be a science behind it. So we built a nine point funnel system. And that nine point funnel system really focused on are we third to fifth to market? Um, can blockchain bring benefit? Is it in the fastest four growing sectors of the internet economy? Can it promote digital inclusion? And we came up with this very robust model that not everything that we put in the top came out the bottom. Um, And we decided that the best thing to do would be be to build a click together ecosystem that formed a super dApp. And the way to do that would have been to start with all of the pieces, um, which is obviously long and painful. And we could have just, you know, you could just do that if you just plug into Google or Yahoo or YouTube and use uh, applications that are out there. But we wanted to build all of the applications ourselves. So we went out and high, um, bought companies like uh, a media platform and a streaming platform and, and went out there and sort of said, how do we own all the pieces um, so that we don't get kicked off? Because uh, as you know, back in those early days, um, it was very much, you don't know if crypto is going to get banned from YouTube or censored or whatever. And we thought we can't run a risk like that. We can't build businesses based on other people's infrastructure. So um, the idea was to not try and be one chain to be we go where the action is and to try and make sure that in the end the conversation doesn't even mention um blockchain to the end user it's we've got faster better cheaper stronger products than you're otherwise accustomed to using and that's it 
Yeah, that's brilliant. You, you kind of enacted Google's model in your own way. So yeah, you needed this infrastructure, don't rely, acquire yes. it and adopt it in that. That's brilliant. Okay. Okay. So, and how long has, has the company yeah. existed? Yeah, since 2018. So okay. you, um, it's only just sort of surfacing. Not many people know, knew about it um, until recently. And I think the thing is that that's because when you're building something as complicated as this and, and with so many pieces, uh, we deployed a DBOP model, so design, build, operate, and transfer. So we get it to MVP, make sure it's got product market fit each each venture, and then we find someone who's very skilled in that area to sort of get it up and running. Um, and so we've been around since 2018, but the pieces are just starting to come together now. Um, it's a big offering, and I think a lot of people have sort of come into the ecosystem and said, this is very difficult for us to get our heads around. There's a lot to digest. and we did the big no-no. Um, we, we haven't taken any VC funding or outside funding. And a lot of people have said, um, you should build one thing, get really good at it. But they don't understand the blockchain space and the opportunity that these companies have. And so the idea for us was, we've already got 63 core staff and 120 contractors, was to to build and build something that's sustainable and robust. But but to understand that to build a super dap, you need lots of pieces and you mm. can't just build one thing um, at one time. You've got to have things going simultaneously. So we did what was considered to be extremely risky um, and extremely high chance of fail failure, but we have been around uh, in turnarounds for years. So we understand when things aren't going right, how to fix it. We understand how to put things back on track and we backed ourselves in. We had a strong vision and we've literally grown from six or seven people only 18 months ago to 63 now um, because it was all contractors. Well, it's difficult if you're if you're self-funded and bootstrapped, you've yeah. got to sort of think to yourself, um, what do we do about, we've got to be cautious, we've got to be careful. Um, we want to keep the wolves at bay as well. We don't want people coming in and telling us, focus on one thing and change your plan. Yeah. So for us, it was a matter of, We've got to do this sustainably and we've got to have revenue producing businesses from day one of launch. Otherwise, we're going to have our hand out trying to collect money every single time and be stuck in a perpetual raise model. So we've 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 had a long time to devise this plan and put it together. And now it's at a point where it's sustainable, profitable and growing. OK, awesome. Uh, so I think let's let's start talking about some of these um, ventures you've acquired mm. and, and, you know, the whole package. So I, I've done a little bit of research, but I'm okay. hoping to get a lot educated further by yourself. So COGS, that, that's yeah. a, that's part of one of the ventures. Could you yes. tell us what that's about? And um, I, I find it interesting as well, because you mentioned about no VC backing, because I've seen a lot of comments around your token supplies all in circulation as well. Mm. Like I've seen a lot of people comment around that. And then mm. I've also seen COGS and, and it has to do with incentivizing the token as a reward for daily quests and things like that. So mm -hmm. could you tell us what that is and how it fits yeah. in? Yeah, sure. So we teamed up with um, with uh, Ark Legger in the early days and he was behind H1Z1 and well known in the gaming space. And what we basically did was we turned around and we said, how do we actually build something that is going to be very popular from a gaming perspective that combines games and NFTs together. And this was something that um, that is ambitious back in those days because they were saying, you know, it can't be done that you can build something completely on mobile for mobile. Um, and we thought, what do we build? And we came up with the concept for Pogs. And I'm not sure what it was called in the States. It might have been called Wafers or Milk Caps. Um, but Pogs was a, a game where you get Milk Caps and you stack them up um two players and then you smack it with a slammer and whatever turns face up you keep yeah. so we we said we don't want to just build one game we want to build multiple games so if the nft pieces are interoperable between games we should call them something different so we went with cogs with a k because it stands for keys to other games so these these are interoperable game pieces that can be used across a number of different um games and the first play to earn is a free play to earn because we're really pushing hard for digital inclusion. Uh, and that's already been in closed beta for a couple of months now. Uh, YGG came on board to help us um, bring on players and they were very big and instrumental with Axie. And now um, we're opening up the registrations now for the public release at the end of this month. But how it works is it's play to earn. So you can earn our Fox tokens. Um, but we've got some pretty cool models coming in now that are going to make the cogs more valuable. Um, which will make it so that we don't have to 
continually rely on a limited supply of tokens, we can actually uh, have enough trading volume and demand for the cogs that they become the um, they become the commodity in the game. Okay, and and these cogs uh, they they are intertwined with the metaverse in some way, aren't mm. they? Yeah. yeah, so they can. There's lots of things we haven't announced, but there's things like, for example, um, the, the opportunity for avatars and to be able to get access. We've talked about secret rooms or areas and parties and events, which would be um, cogs holders would get special access and rights as a result of holding those NFTs. Ah, okay, awesome. No, that's great. Okay, so uh, and and just for everyone listening as well. Now we've got an you know ten minutes in and barely talked about the metaverse and it's something I actually told Ben before we recorded I I wanted to talk about all the other ventures and then we'll talk about Mm. the metaverse so it's coming but it's really important context be set uh, so that you understand well we all understand just why this metaverse is so different and unique and how much you've done in the background to make sure it's successful Uh, so we'll come back to that okay so we've covered um cogs anything else Ben you want to uh talk about regarding cogs that you feel well cogs yeah, Cogs is a product of R Fox Games, so that's our yeah. gaming division and venture. So they'll they'll produce um, multiple games, but the yeah. idea is not for us to become like a full time game studio. It is to get the SDK out and the um, the ability for other games looking to monetize their offering. They can come in and use these game pieces, and they can also yeah. come in and build and develop. So. Games is a is an already in fully full flight division. It already has. Um, uh, a, a, quite a large team in there and it also is focused on bringing out the nfts in the games and it's already a profitable business unit for us wow awesome okay so that's cogs gaming section now you had uh you have red fox media yes so our fox media is uh we acquired a company called my media in myanmar which has 13 million um followers and users and that basically produces content through facebook for samsung lenovo um grab all the big brands in the Southeast Asian region. And what it does is it actually um, takes a, an ad campaign, creates the, the videos and content, and then pushes that out to their large audience. What we've done is taken that and said, we can do a lot of um, much more broad things. If we also buy a, a Fox TV, if we buy a streaming platform, we can combine the two. And I know it's a crude analogy, but for example, if someone was to capture footage of 9-11 on their phone, for example, and they upload a piece of footage to the marketplace, um, what would happen is it would sit there like a video, but CNBC or Fox or whatever would come along and say, oh, I want that piece of footage. They'd buy that and it would mint it as an NFT, as a proof of receipt and transfer of um, ownership, and that goes straight to the to that person. Now, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that the person who is selling it owns it, so there's still going to be issues, but these are issues that have gone on for a long, long period of time. But that person now has to identify who they are, and they've gone into that contract, so it's going to reduce the amount of people that want to put up that content. But anyone buying it and redistributing it now has a, a token of proof to say, this has been bought on this day, I own the rights to that. They can either then sub-license or sell that to their audiences as well. So Mm. there's a lot of cool stuff in media. So it's also a coal platform. So what we want to do is get trusted people coming on, key opinion leaders that would sign up. And then Samsung and Lenovo can come along and say, right, we want to launch our campaigns and they'll be paired with somebody who's not a... a, um, uh, a fake person it's the real one we've we vet these people and bring them on so we've got access to production we've got access to um, streaming capabilities we've got access to the nft side of things and we've got access to celebrities and and people with um, notoriety that can help promote and endorse those products on behalf of companies well okay yeah so that that's the media i, I do yes. know that's really cool about um yes you can never cut off the so someone's uploaded existing footage uh i Mm. get that but i guess that would happen if it got sold and didn't get picked up somehow there would be a way to contest it but it also enables the people who actually have shot footage or content and stuff um uploaded and then always be the recipient of you know future sales um so you've kind of incorporated that in into the overall picture which is great okay so We've covered media now. R Fox e-commerce. This is mm. this is the one I'm I'm very interested to hear mm. more about because, um, from what I read, I know this is very big in uh, where you're located. That yes, part of the world. Yes. Yep. 
many people don't understand what it is. And when I first saw it, I thought, this is stupid. What is this? Um, but the thing is, in China, in 2019, it was a $69 billion industry just, just in China. Two people on Hearts Day, what it's called, the, the holiday, make more people make more money in one stream than 10 Macy stores make in an entire year. Um, so this is like an extremely um, very, very profitable thing. Now, for those who don't understand it, the easiest way to explain it is me. I'll stand here with a mobile phone in front of me and I'll say, I'm selling Red Fox T-shirts or shirts, polo shirts. And you would say, what sizes does it come in and colours? And I can respond to you in real time. And quite often these e-commerce streamers will actually try on five different tops in a show. Um, some of the guys actually put lipsticks and makeup on and all sorts of weird stuff, but they do this to, to actually illustrate what it looks like on flesh tones and stuff. And it's something that you can interact with. When they get bigger, they get a like a call center of people sitting there answering the questions as they're coming through. And we've integrated chatbot technology so that if I'm watching it on a delayed or later, I can still say, hey, Fez, what's that, what's that uh, top you're wearing? Does it come in red? And the chatbot will say, it comes in these colors, verify your address and organize delivery. So this is um, massive. And you'll see that some of these e-commerce streamers have 40 phones in front of them and they're going live out on TikTok and they're going live out on Facebook. They're going live out on Weibo. They're going live out on all these different channels simultaneously with people in the background answering the questions. So this sort of got expediated because of COVID. A lot of people couldn't have that immersive experience anymore. They couldn't go into shops. And we finished our app a long period of time ago. But the reason we hadn't rolled it out or put it out is because we know how big this sector is going to be for us. Yep. We wanted to, to wait for the metaverse play to come in. And we also wanted to wait for us to have bought a streaming platform, which was extremely important because we didn't want to use YouTube. So we've had to sort of put all of that together and piece it together. But we're very fortunate because we looked at data and trends and we realized that all of the things that we were building were in sectors that were going to blow up and we thought it was going to be four or five years away and a lot of people were saying you guys are way too early and it's too big a gamble um and then all of a sudden covid hit and it actually helped our cause because people started having to do everything remotely mm -hmm. so in hindsight it looks like we were probably um smack on the money at the right time but then it caused a problem for us because we had two years less than we thought to produce everything so mm -hmm. um yes i'm not complaining though it's a it's a, it's a wonderful <laughs> problem to have but the e-commerce streaming will be through mobile application and it will allow any single um uh, we call it the gray market we want to focus on all of those businesses that are on facebook and use youtube streaming businesses and all the rest of it we want to give them a platform where their product stands um, up based on quality and these guys can have a proper platform where they can um, s structure and regulate and set up a business and they can actually do this streaming for a for a living and for an actual business and not have to worry about I don't know my customers on Facebook you can interact directly with your customer base and how we do it is like all of our products and services we act as the introductory service we connect the buyers to the sellers we take a transaction fee from from the uh, actual ensuing transactions we, we don't we're not a, a a money money processor we don't take money and then say right we give some to you and some to you we just take a clip of the ticket on the way through and then allow other people to use our products and services as a white label offering as well so um ours is very much we, we're very mindful of the fact that if we don't allow businesses to click in, then we're going to knock on doors for the rest of our lives and offer people $4 each to come and onboard. And it's yeah. not a very effective way to get customers. Yeah. 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 And and like it's, it's a tried and tested model, isn't it? It's extremely yeah. successful. So you're, you're just basically uh, exposing it to new parts of the world where and incorporating, I guess, newer technology in the background as well. Um, yes. Cool. Okay. So, so far we have touched on, oh, let me go through the list of gaming, media, yes. e-commerce, yes. and yes. now R Fox NFTs. What? Yes. That? That's probably the one that surprised us the most because what happened was we were getting a lot of big brands that we haven't announced yet that are just sort of slowly coming out now um, say to us, we want to get into NFTs. And then you say, okay, what do you want to do? And they say, you tell us. And then you'd say, right, we'll have to come up with a plan for you and work out what you can do. Then they say, right. And then when you've done that, you've got to give us a huge amount of money to use our name or whatever. And then we'll give you a very small 
commission or fee as a result of that and that's good for you guys and we thought to ourselves this is great but what we're doing is where we have to take away our focus on building out these ventures and we have to get into a situation where we're hand holding because they're big brands and they deserve the treatment and attention they need and it would feel as though that they need to feel as though that's the only thing that we're doing and we can't be in a situation where that's the only thing we're doing so we turned around as a team and we said hey listen we have to build shopify for nfts because businesses need to be able to come in and they need to be able to say i want to do this and i want to do it this way and i want to have this and we turned around and said let's just provide them the tools so that they can do it themselves now what was important how it works is it has a headless cms so you can set up your own website just by dragging assets in it's very simple builder then you choose it's agnostic to chain which is the thing that's taking a while and cost us a lot of money but we can integrate any chain into this equation. Now, say that I'm, for example, Icon, and Icon's a massive fashion brand. Now, they don't want to be listed only on OpenSea because people have to troll through an index and find their collection, and then there's fake collections. So what they want is they, Icon will say, I'm a premium fashion brand. You should be able to come directly to my website and buy my product and know that it's authentic. But as Icon, I don't also want to miss out on being listed on OpenSea. So if I choose to use Ethereum as the contract deployment um, mechanism, which is built into our uh, NFT white label platform, and you then list your NFTs on your website, you're automatically listed on uh, OpenSea as well. Yep. So yep. you get the best of both worlds. You've got your pedestal, you've got your show, you don't have to worry about fake sites. It'll take you right to the right site because I'm using the website now that's been a labor of love and it's been a long time in the making, but it also not only has this ability for you to set all that stuff up, it also acts as the shop front for all of the shops in the metaverse. Uh, it acts as the platform for the marketplace on the media site that I was telling you where you upload and you get your NFTs minted. Um, yep. It acts as Mint Lab, a product that's um, in, in COGS. Um, it does, it's, a, it's really a backbone of, of everything that we do. So it started off as a, let's do this, so that we can onboard more people so they don't all have to wait in the line for Dapper Labs, for example. Let's mm -hmm. make it that that we can really um, get a production line of as many companies that want to come through while the boom's still relevant. And that's that's what brought it about. And now every time we talk to partners or VCs, they hone in on that one. That's the thing they want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, cause I, I guess Shopify's appeal was they simplified setting up a storefront. Correct. And um, supply chains and things like that were already Correct. hooked up so you could pick your products. And you've literally, what you're telling me is created this from an NFT front where Correct. any brand can literally hit. That's brilliant. Yeah. Correct. Awesome. And we've got, so finish... far we've got Ethereum, yeah. um, uh, Binance Smart Chain, we're putting in Wax. So we'll have like those are the three main ones that we've got at the, at the moment. So Wax is done and Ethereum's done. And now we've built the integration and aggregation layers and now we can bring the, the rest of them on. And, and companies like Immutable X have made a product that's so simple for us to click into our offering. Um, and then the great part about it is that sparked conversations with some of these uh, platforms to say, hey, can we take what you've built and then take the white label and then offer that as our product on our on our mm -hmm. platform so and we say we don't care as long as the yeah. transaction value comes through and we get a clip of that ticket that's the whole idea of it so this has sort of been a much bigger venture for us than we thought it would be um and it's at the point now we've already released miss universe on it we're about to do chasing space with um the nasa, NASA astrophysicist that's leading the juno space oh, mission yes. and we've got yeah we've got tons of projects coming through now um, but we're still having to do a bit of hand-holding. It's going to take a, um, a few months, probably till the end of quarter one next year, till it's ready for grandmas. Yeah. So is it, uh, you know, is it tied to the storefront, then it's OpenSea? Or because you mentioned um, a few of the chains that are integrated, so would it be mm -hmm. that uh, once you're set up through this, your NFT can be on OpenSea, on one of the stores on Binance and, and yep. Wax? Um, you can choose. Three? You okay. can choose the protocol that you want to deploy and then the aggregation tool um, we're working towards. And as we know, these are limitations of blockchain. And yeah. uh, I know I kind of trying to solve these problems as well. But, you know, if we've got a token that's on WAX, that's on mm. ETH, that's on BSC, people come along to us and say, um, I want to use my RFOX to buy your product. And you go, which one do you have? That's the wrong one. And people go, what are you talking about? I bought RFOX. I should be able to use. So we're trying to work out how to simplify the issue of cross-chain purchases 
and simplify people being able to just use one currency regardless of which chain it's on. And that would be the same for the NFT. So we will get to a point very shortly where we have all of your NFTs in one spot. Um, they'll, be, um, they'll be displayed in one wallet. Uh, we've got a global um, ID system called RFOX ID that's just rolling out now. And that's a unified ID system, very similar to using Google or mm. email to register an ID. And then all the subsequent wallets and chains that we're connected to would be in there. So yep. you'd be able to see anything that you're holding, whether it's token based or NFT based, all in one convenient place. Wow, awesome. I know um, I, I can also imagine, as you were saying, describing that all the iconists in the background are saying BTP, BTP, yes, right? yes, interoperable yes. solution. And yes, yes, I can see huge um, value it could it could offer here. And we'll, we'll touch on this a bit later. Yep. So, um, okay, I, I think that's great. So we've spoken about all this. I think it's time. Let, let's talk about the metaverse. Now, is it, it's called the RFOX Vault, isn't it? Yes. 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 Okay. So Over Vault, to you. Vault came. Um, it's V A L T, as in um, virtual and alternate currencies or alternate universes. So um, V Alt. So Vault. Um, no U in it. Um, ah. So the idea for this was we turned around and said we're going to be stuck in this perpetual raise model because the other one that we've got is R Fox Finance. We have staking and pools and farms and everything as well, and that's already got. 60 odd million dollars locked in in there just on our own token but we turned around and we said hang on um we're going to be stuck in a perpetual raise model every venture we start up we're going to require funding from outside and we don't want to do that so what's the dap um tie together and we decided let's do a virtual space metaverses are going to be big in the future um all of those things will plug in together um and the great part about it is if they're all feeding into that metaverse We've got an audience base that's shared, meaning we don't have to go out and establish a new audience for every product or, or service that we launch. Therefore, we don't have to go out and raise to build that, that audience. We've got a, a much, much stronger chance for these businesses to survive. And about 18 months ago, I did the first interview on talking about the metaverse and how it would work. And um, everybody said, you know, people have tried virtual malls before and virtual shops, and this is never going to work. It does. It's very difficult. And then there's... Decentraland have got like a a, a a place and it's got holes all over it and there's not many users for it. And I actually said in the interview, when Google and Facebook and Amazon all come back and say that they're going to be metaverse companies, then people will get it. And I think we yeah. sort of got raspberries and laughed at and told, you know, we're, we're kind of a bit mentally insane. Um, but, you know, fast forward 18 months and in retrospect, um, for us, we thought it was a no brainer because... When, but we also thought about it long and hard. And we thought if Facebook and that do come in, they're going to swallow this market, right? They've got money. They've got they've got funds like nobody's business and they've got an audience and then they've got everything. So unless we have a USP, a, a unique selling proposition, we're going to be frozen out and left out in the cold. So what are we going to do that's different? And if we're focusing on digital inclusion, providing a platform for these grey market businesses and we can provide the e-commerce side of things, let's mm. corner the market for blockchain, e-commerce and retail and make it so that the the world, which is above the clouds, floating in space. Um, and I'll tell you why in a second. But yeah. we thought if there's those shops and then we've got themed areas. So if we've got quarters, one based on art and it has galleries and, and um, chances for artists to launch. And then you've got another one that's based on music and it's got concert halls for VR concerts. Uh, a lot of the world's changed now. You can't travel. So these artists are all grounded. They've lost their incomes. Um, and then you've got a gaming quarter and you've got esports stadiums and all the rest of it. So let's do what the others will do. Let's let's gamify it. Let's make it a game, multiplayer, uh, hoverboards, cool things to do, Easter egg hunts and gaming. But let's also make sure that people understand that our unique selling proposition is to, is to corner this e-commerce and retail market by giving people actual shop fronts. And then the big differentiator was the two things. First of all, why is it in space? We first turned around and said, legislation will say, where is this thing based? What country? And then we started thinking, well, what's not a country? Let's whack it in space. doesn't change yeah. servers or anything, but it's a fun little story. And then the second part was, how are we going to really sort of, um, sort of differentiate? How are we going to make it so that these stores work? Um, we can, we can make it so that you're doing digital items and NFTs and all the rest of it, but then we can deploy 
the vault in countries like Indonesia, Philippines, and you've got a passport system. And then the great part about that is I can now walk into a food court in the Philippines and I'm not in Norway or, or Greenland or something like that. I can go into the food court, order my food, it will get delivered to my house. And while I'm waiting, I can go play a game, go on an Easter egg hunt, go and explore, and my food will come to my door. Um, but the thing yeah. that was important for us is we we use the Ready Player One analogy because people understand that. But the thing that I th see as a growing problem is I'm seeing the narrative of people saying, what's wrong with our world? Why do they have to escape? This is just because of COVID. It doesn't mean we're living in a dystopian world. And we're trying to say that's not our goal. Our mm -hmm. goal is not to provide an, an, an avenue for escapism. It, it is to provide a an immersive platform that removes boundaries and allows us to help onboard people uh, into the digital economy and, and focus on digital inclusion. It's not supposed to replace your world. It's supposed to change the way that you immersively interact. And this is Web 3.0. This is the way that the future is going and the way the world's going. And we need to understand the Charles Duhigg habit loops. Once you've been doing something for three months, you systemically change the way you look at things. And just because the world opens up again doesn't mean people are going to revert back to the way it was. Yep. Yep, no. And look, in all honesty, um, I, I, I want to touch more on this. So you've got your worlds that you're in, but you've kind of incorporated that they can step out to the food court in that section of the world that they're really mm -hmm. in and place orders. Um, yes and receive uh, food so it's kind of yes you're still away but there's always a link back to reality in everything you do while in the vault um in the metaverse i should say uh, mm. that that's pretty cool so i'm just processing everything you've said ben there's a it lot, is to a take lot. In. <laughs> it is a lot. It's, it's taken us years to work out how to verbalize this in a very succinct and condensed way and thank you to mr zuckerberg for coming along and sort of saying there and now everyone knows what the metaverse is so we've had a, we've gone from an, an impossible situation and you guys are like talking about stuff that's not going to happen for a long time to mm. holy crap it's here it's close um so we are running now to try and make sure that we get some advantage out of um sort of identifying these sectors early and yeah. um and building in them early um, and I think that, you know, not focusing on one thing and having this multitude of things at one time is sort of now starting to, um, people are starting to actually understand maybe this, maybe this is a good way, a good thing to have done because we've got a two or three year head start on everybody else yeah. now. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and, you know, it's so, uh, the crypto space is so perfect for it because yes, what, this is one thing where like, even me, I work with so many people, none of them, barely any of them, I should say, I in Australia, everyone else is all around the world that I'm always chatting to and tackling my arch nemesis time zones with, but uh, it would be so cool to just, you know, one day everyone jump on in the metaverse and, you know, hang out and, do whatever play a game or any options that are available so um no i agree with you it's not about going creating another reality it's just about the enablement of different types of engagements that's what it's about um 100%. cool okay so okay that that's painted a whole picture there and i wanted to quickly touch on the token so mm. you've got R Fox. I made this mm -hmm. comment around um, circulating supply, and you also mentioned no VC backing and things like that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. can you can you talk through a bit about the tokenomics? Because I know there's yes. two, and and obviously, why it intertwines as to why people should get shot with their vaults and things storefronts in the metaverse, and mm. how all that comes together. Yeah. So. You're right. There's two tokens. There's an RFOX token, which is our, um, our sort of our currency, right? That's the yeah. token that's used to throughout the, the metaverse and throughout all of our ecosystem. Now, the great part about it is this is an important differentiation to make. So Icon might come into the metaverse, which they're doing, come into a shop and say, I want to accept ICX as the form of payment. I shouldn't have to have your stuff forced down my throat. I want to use our token. And we turn around and say, then use it. You can take whatever you like. What we do is we charge a 2% transaction fee, right? Yeah. And what happens is that 2% gets converted into RFOX. And what happens is the RFOX gets distributed 1% to the other token holder, which is VFOX, and I'll explain that in a second. And yeah. then 0.75% of a percent goes to RFOX. That's our 
that's our income, and 0.25% goes to quartermasters, and they're the people that are looking after each of the quarters. Now, we didn't want to go full, fully down the Dow route, but we wanted to also make it that um, we've got these marshals or these people that are um, responsible for rent control, for onboarding, for event management, for planning. So we, we give a percentage of the um, transactional volume to them as well. They're going to need teams underneath of them to run these. But the reason we have a second token, a VFOX token, is because people um, had said to us continually, if there is some sort of rewards, um, you know that airdrops became a dirty word and that there's lots of different tax um, situations in different countries, people would, were saying, it's you're penalising me. Um, I'm in a situation where I get tax events and triggers when I'm just holding you a token. I don't there's, I don't want to hold your token if I'm going to actually end up having um, implications to my tax situation. And they wanted a better solution. So we turned around and said, let's make a rewards token. And the only way you could get that was to um, to farm or to use your RFOX token. That was the only way you could get it. And how it works is that is 21 million in supply. It's already all out. Um, we did it. You basically got it out of a pool in five months. And that's that's what it's for. So you have to lock it into a staking pool and the 1% gets funneled through to you from um, from the, the sales and transactions. Now, because it hasn't started yet, we started giving away a large percentage of our shop sales um, to VFOX to give them value until such time as the transactions went through. But with our Fox, we've got more than 70% of the supplies already out into the market. Um, we have had people like Mike Novogratz and Galaxy come along and buy some tokens, but they've not, no one's invested in equity. So, um, so yeah, that's the two different tokens. Okay, cool. No, that's great. Uh, so you mentioned, um, you know, because obviously you've been, your team's been hard at work trying to incorporate all the chains and that sign in mm. and along comes Icon and mm. oh, there's a great opportunity partnership. And oh, by the way, did you yes. know we've cracked this BTP solution? Have you, I'm going to be cheeky here. What, what, when you've seen the solution, has your mind started racing or team's mind started racing how BTP could be incorporated as a, mm -hmm. um, into the metaverse? Uh, any, yeah. any alpha to share there? Yeah, so so generally speaking, if we're looking at a partnership and we've got lots that are coming through that haven't been announced yet as well, they're very one-dimensional, right? And it's um, it's 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 because most businesses are told you should be focused on one thing and do it well. So they'll come and say, I want to release an NFT collection, we've got IP, we've got this, and then you say, okay, we'll do a partnership, and that's it. That's what the partnership is, and it doesn't mean it's any um, it's not it's not a good partnership. It just means that it's focused on one thing. Whereas when Icon came along, it was like, hang on, not only can you come in and, and use a different medium and a place for meetups and a place to, to interact and then a chance for, because they're very progressive in the way that they think as well, in bringing in um, new technology sets to provide more value to the user base. But hang on, you're also dabbling in the DeFi space. You've also got pools over on your side. You've also got, um, we're also targeting different audiences slightly and we can work together but the thing is that you're also we've got a we've got a bridge from eth to wax and we've got um, a bridge that we use from eth to um, binance smart chain but plug in to icon and suddenly it's a v8 engine that you put in and <laughs> the good part about it is we no longer have to um, focus so much on that stuff because we can focus on what we are good at and what we want to focus on, and that's the experience and, and building out this click together model. And this is like, um, I think it's a sigh of relief because we would have had to have done all of this ourselves as well. So to be able to sort of um, plug into BTP means that that can make us accelerate at a much faster rate of knots as well. And obviously yeah. that would be mutually beneficial for Icon because it would bring in millions of users because um, through the media companies and that report and through our game, play to earn game, there's obviously going to be, there is millions of people there already, but now there's going to be millions more. And that means instant um, user base for, for the network as well. So I think everybody would be, um, I think we would have been stupid to get into a room and then say, no, there's nothing here for either party to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Look, uh, like I said, match made in heaven. It's brilliant. Um, cool. No, that's awesome, Ben. I, I, I had this other thought as well. You know, with COGS, you mentioned, uh, and I'm backtracking here, um, you know, it's a, a play to earn. So where's that? 
Where's mm. that supply coming from? Uh, yep. I thought maybe I connected it through the feeds, but I haven't. I was very curious about that. Mm. So we, we, we actually have like a, an ecosystem fund. Um, okay. So every month we get a, a number of tokens that comes out. We get 7 million tokens come out over the course of um, the next, well, two and a half years or thereabouts. And we've got... Um, a portion of tokens, 50 million tokens set aside specifically for the gaming division for this type of stuff. So okay. the, the the good part about that is that there's a vested interest for us to make sure that there's value for our token holders and the token price is going up because uh, otherwise we're going to quickly run out of, uh, out of tokens and we're going to have to start purchasing the tokens, which is still a good dilemma for the holder, um, to, to make sure that that continues. But ultimately, we um, we do have a, uh, an amount set aside. We would personally rather save that for when esports and the tournaments and everything start up. Um, yep. And then to that's why we're doing Mint Lab and a few of these initiatives to try and um, bring in other communities that will actually help to raise the value of the cogs, um, meaning that we can give cogs as prizes for play to earn and not have to be reliant on giving out RFOX. So that's the whole modus operandi of um, of Mint Lab. Because those cogs will then give those exclusive features where you can walk yes. around into spaces and things that normally yes. people wouldn't get to experience. So yes. okay, that, that's pretty awesome. Now, uh, Ben, I want to I want to quickly ask a couple of really noobish questions because I yeah, know sure. um, you know we're talking future. When you think metaverse, you're thinking future. Yes. So straight away yes. the movie comes to mind, and you think, oh god, yes. I need a VR headset. Is that yes. the case here? You don't Do you need a VR headset. It will be available in VR, but also on as like an application. Uh, for mobiles. We understand the majority of our user base uh, is, is mobile based, um, but we also understand that the technology is progressing so quickly that, you know, there'll be either your VR headsets like your Oculus will become so cheap that everybody can afford it or um, cardboard and, and those types of things will progress to a level where they're good enough. Um, so we want to offer people the the choice of, of how they do that, but we also understand that um, you know, especially in this region, people will spend two to three months wages to buy a new iPhone or a new um, phone because it's a status symbol and uh, it's it's a must have. And I think if you think about the current price of like a, even an Oculus, I think current models are about $300. So yeah. it's not a huge investment. Um, and I know that that's still a lot of money for a lot of people, especially in the Southeast Asian region. But like I say, by the time this is sort of accepted and people have sort of really embraced metaverses because the first few versions of metaverses are going to we're going to look back on them in 10 years and say holy this is like um space invaders and yeah. the early atari yeah. games um i still i still get on a vr headset and after 40 minutes i feel like i want to throw up because i'm a bit um it's got like that motion sickness feeling yeah, but yeah. It, it'll progress and it'll progress fast and what we we don't build for now we build for what's going to happen next three steps ahead so um I think if you're focused on building to capitalize on whatever's happening now, you're going to always be chasing your tail. So we, 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 the analogy we use a lot is we know where this road's going and, and we're going to go there and set up a lemonade stand for when everybody gets there and they're tired and thirsty from the journey. So that's yeah, how we, that's how we think. And um, I believe, I believe that the, um, that we'll get many more app users in the beginning. And then I think over the course of the next 18 months or two years that you'll see pretty much everybody will switch to VR. Yeah, no, agree. Um, I, I was thinking while you were saying that, is there plans to venture into the console spaces to make these uh, like a game available so people can access the vaults if they, you know, don't like that, want to, that step further? Yeah, so from a graphic we're doing, perspective. Yeah, we're doing gamification and Easter eggs and all the rest of it inside of the, inside of the metaverse. But yeah. um, ultimately, I think that what we've got is a very clear vision on what this thing will do the pieces and how it will fit together. But we don't profess that we understand where the technology is going to move over the next few years. So the most important thing for us is to build the hooks, I call them the hooks or the, the white labels and the, the ability for other companies that are building in these areas to come and integrate because that plugs into our model. Our model is very much the D-Bot, find an expert once the product market fits established and then run with it. And, and our, our modus operandi is to say, let's get people to click in that are far more experienced than us bakers for yeah. bakers rooms, mechanics for mechanics rooms, and let them take this as far as they possibly can. And we don't profess that we're going to build the best game that RFOX offers, won't be built by us. 
the yeah. best finance product that our Fox offers won't be built by us. What we've done is built an example of what can be built using our tools and then provided easy access to our tools so that people can come along and build and create. So, um, yes, it starts out looking like it's very centralised and controlled by us and we get the say, but then it's mm. going to evolve very quickly into... Uh, and and the, re the reason that it has to be that way is if you get 20 people in a room and go, just build something, they'll just tear each other apart, right? Whereas yep. if you say, here's the starting point and here's how it works, now use your 20 brilliant brains to make this better, it's amazing what people can come up with and what they can do if they're given a, a starting point. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. So I guess, Ben, we've created a, quite a big picture here. I, I feel we've covered how it all falls into place as well. Is there mm -hmm. anything else that maybe in my questioning I haven't covered that you feel uh, you'd like Iconist or just anyone in your community to know about as well? I think I think mainly just that um, we're really excited about this partnership because we understand that Icon brings so much to the table. They've been around since the 2017 um, era, I call it. It's like they're like eras. And they've weathered storms. They've survived many hurdles and obstacles and they've had many challenges. Um, and I think that the thing is that we we don't have this maximalist view. We welcome Iconists across. Um, so far, the reception from your side has been fantastic towards the RFOX guys. And you know what? If some people say, I want to diversify and I'm going to invest in ICX and I'm going to get behind this project as well, then we feel very great. We feel great about that. We feel great that we're uh, introducing people to quality projects and that we're working together because together we're going to get places a lot faster and a lot stronger. So I just think that um, I want to extend a, a welcome to all of the people from the Iconist side that have come and taken a look into us. I understand it's not um, easy to get your head around, but we're working very hard on fixing the comms by the end of the month and going through a bit of a rebrand so that it's a bit um, easier to sort of come into one place and not sort of... We're still telling the the story of we were the uh, Southeast Asia's first blockchain venture builder and it's quite hard for people to get their heads around. So now we can simplify it now that everyone knows what metaverses are. So I yeah. guess my underlying overall message is very welcome uh, all the iconists. If we can't answer the questions for you well enough, please reach out to the team and let the team um, help answer those questions that you might have. But all we want is to provide extra value to the icon, the icon holders. Um, and we want to be able to sort of make sure that we partner with the right types of brands and companies that are actually looking to do the right thing and looking to provide value and looking after their users. And, and I think that we found a winner in, in Icon for that. I agree. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're excited to be, um, this partnership is exciting news. It's just Icon expanding in different spaces, but underlying how you touched on, um, we offer a solution. We have a solution that is just mm. perfect for this kind of thing. So um, it's great that it's come to fruition. I think um, David, Void Cyber, they, they're the ones who've connected everything up, which is brilliant. Yes. Um, so full shout out to, to the guys over there. Um, ben, I've really enjoyed I can keep going. Like, I'll keep chatting away. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, really appreciate you taking the time. I, I've just, um, like, I've known about Red Fox Labs and a lot of my friends are invested in it. Uh, and I just always kept getting sidetracked. But the second I were, got news, the news dropped about this partnership, I um, jumped in. It just so happened I was on Layer 2 Loop Ring. You'll uh, list oh, you the Layer 2 solution. Yep. And I'd sold some LRC. I'm like, well, this is perfect. I'm finally diving in. I'm doing it. Um, and that was just from the introduction. I started looking at how you engage with the community personally and keep everyone up to date. And I was just blown away and thought, okay, this is it. We're, we've got someone who really cares and passionate about what they're building. Um, that alone was enough for me, let alone metaverse, the future, I totally get it and see the um, possibilities. Uh, but yeah, just, just how you've gone about it. And I know you've even kicked off the Iconist. You've thrown up $500 just for everyone to yep, you know yep. get involved. So thank you so much. You, you've, Welcome. The partnership is new, but you've done so much already. So really looking forward to this leading to bigger and better things. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for taking the time to to talk to me as well and to get to know the project. We really appreciate that and uh, we're really looking forward to it. I think we haven't scratched the surface for what we can do together. So um, really looking forward to it. But shows like this and channels like this um, that help to sort of 
bring the community together and advise people what goes on. This is something that I really admire as well. I've come from this space, I understand it. So um, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to, to, to spend time asking me questions. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. And for everyone listening, uh, yes, thank you. Make sure you like, subscribe, share this around. This is a great, um, personally, I feel it's a great episode. We've covered a range of content that everything Red Fox Labs is building. And um, if you want someone to know what they're up to, perfect. It's not just about Icon. It's about bo both of us. So great to hear. Thank you, Ben. Thank Welcome. you, everyone listening. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.